So another technique uh, which has pr made a big difference in practice is what's called batch normalization. And the idea comes from the normal standardization we perform on input features. So in there we, we uh, have always in, in, uh, taken our features and removed the mean and in, in many cases also divided by the standard deviation such that our each input feature is approximately a standard normal uh, distributed variable. So uh, Joffe and uh, Sigetti uh, had this uh, idea of saying why, why don't we try to do the same thing internally inside uh, the network. So here we look at a mini batch of m examples and we now say we want to calculate the, the some value, it could be like the pre-activation values or the output of a hidden unit, but we have some x's, some internal representation of the network, so we can compute the mean over this mini batch and we can compute the standard deviation or the variance here, and then we can make a new variable x where we have standardized the variable more or less. You can see we also, in the standardization trick, we get this headed x, we also, div we also add to the variance a small epsilon in order to not having having uh, very large numbers if the variance is very small for this particular unit we are looking at. And now we then make a new variable yj which is gamma times the, the standardized x plus a beta and these gamma and beta are learned parameters so they are two new weights in the network. So the idea now is that you can see that we have kind of taken out the scale of the of the uh, network and instead we learn this gamma and beta and this has actually show, uh, turned out to lead to quite uh, fast convergence and you can also look at this as a type of regularization because you are, you are um, I haven't introduced regularization yet but, but in regularization we, we try to, to uh, make the network uh, not overfit and uh, you can you can see that this is kind of a way to you can sometimes do regularization by introducing noise and this is a way to introduce noise because we we uh, subtract this mean over the mini batch and we divide by the standard deviation over the mini batch and these are uh, quantities that would be noisy in the respect that they change from mini batch to mini batch so in a way we confuse the network uh, by having this uh, noise introduced uh, different noise, different mean and different standard deviation introduced in each batch. And this helps also overfitting. But you can also see from this graph that it actually also gives much faster convergence and this is on the famous uh, Google net for image net uh, image rec recognition and you can see that the blue line is, uh, is uh, the batch normalization uh, uh, used and and you can see that the standard learning is this uh, the the line that ends at these 30 million updates. So you can see it goes much faster. And of course, these are, are very big networks, so this is a considerable uh, save in computation time. And this is something we use all the time now, batch normalization. And there's also been recent new suggestions of how to uh, do other types of this kind of layer-wise normalization. So here are a few slides uh, that kind of uh, uh, from Tapani that discusses how we can actually understand why this works. So I'll just jump over that. It's for you. You can study them yourself. And there's also references to these papers uh, at the end of the slides. So this was a little bit about batch normalization, and this concludes uh, the part on on uh, initialization and other methods to get faster convergence.